Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and I have with me in the studio today Olufunke Barua. Funke is the program officer, gender, racial, and ethnic, ethnic justice. justice, Ford Foundation West Africa office. Funke, you are welcome. Thank you, Father. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Funke. We have come together to this time to discuss, as you know, this is the day that Luke Terra kicked off uh, a training program uh, with religious leaders and religious stakeholders on modalities to end sexual and gender-based violence. But mm -hmm. you are the ones that are really, really behind um, a lot of the efforts that various agencies are, are, are making. Uh, within the 16 days of activism to end sexual and gender-based violence mm -hmm. and beyond, tell us what Ford Foundation is doing, Ford Foundation West Africa mm -hmm. is doing, and especially uh, what is happening in Nigeria to raise awareness mm -hmm. on, on, on the extent of sexual and gender-based violence mm -hmm. and what we all must do to end mm -hmm. the menace. Thank you, Father. Uh, in 2020, uh, our current strategy uh, took a slight turn to start looking at um, prevention of gender-based violence. We recognize, you know, globally one in three women, even in Africa, one in three women are affected. And at some points in their lives, they will be or must have been victims of gender-based violence. But we thought that rather than program in the area where most people do, which is response, legal uh, uh, criminalization, criminal. support, you know, and the rest of them, why don't we focus on stopping violence from happening in the first place, you know. And like we always say in the office, if you speak to many victims or survivors of gender-based violence and you say, oh, we have a fantastic sexual assault referral center or a safe home for you or a rape kit or medical supplies, on the one hand, or we wipe away all that memory and it never happened. I'm very sure most women, girls, men, boys, or any victim of sexual and gender-based violence will say I would prefer not to have this experience in the first place. So that's why we're focusing on prevention as a response mm -hmm. to gender-based violence, because of course, we believe prevention is better than cure. And at the root of gender-based violence is inequality. Inequality is a driving factor for gender-based violence because some people feel they are more powerful, they're better, they have more access, and that inequality breeds negative, social and cultural, or in some cases, religious norms that are misinterpreted and used against the weak and vulnerable. So we believe that uh, shifting social norms, which tacitly perpetuate violence again, or uh, encourage the perpetuation of violence against women, is one way uh, to address gender-based violence. And who are the custodians of social norms? Who are the custodians of culture and religion? It's faith and culture leaders. And they have the power they have the influence to use uh, the, the authority they have, the pulpits that they, 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 they share with their, their, their congregants to change uh, these social norms and to entrench the positive uh, uh, qualities of respect and human dignity for everyone, regardless of, of gender. I recognize, and it is part of what I say mm. to people, that mm. all sexual and gender-based violence mm. is abuse of power. It's abuse of power, yeah. So it is abuse of power. And um, that is why you hardly have a megad beating her madam, his madam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be Or a day. nanny beating her madam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hardly happens. Yes. Reason is that this is about power. It's power and symmetry. how power mm -hmm. is abused. So a madam who has a poor village girl as a nanny misuses that power and beats the nanny black and blue yeah. a man who believes that he, that he has physical prowess beats his wife it's abuse of power mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the power that i mean it's not it's not in everything that people are equal a man is not equal with the woman yeah. when the woman can can get pregnant and deliver babies and the man cannot mm -hmm. uh -huh. that's a privilege given to the woman mm -hmm. that is not given to the man but the privilege given to the man, which originally is to protect, meaning you have physical powers, to protect the wife and the children. You now use it mm. to oppress yeah, the it's wife. It's abuse of power. So it's abuse of power. And we must 
con constantly help people to know that when power is given, it is a privilege. Mm. And it is all forms of power is supposed to be for service. Yeah. All forms of power are supposed to be for service. But there is clearly widespread abuse of power in all sectors, mm. which, which, which is part of this, our discussion. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, w in in response to this, I mean, you have told us that Ford Foundation is focusing your strategic um, engagement these days is to prevent. Mm -hmm. I am aware of um, uh, a, a, a group you co-sponsored with uh, UN Women yes. to bring traditional uh, rulers and Together. religious leaders mm -hmm. that I happen to have been one of them. Yeah. I'm also aware of the AU effort, AU and UN Women, mm -hmm. and you have. Ford Foundation also Supporting supported that, that uh, to bring traditional rulers from across Africa mm -hmm. uh, and, and a number of uh, religious leaders also, uh, like I said, towards, the, towards evolving a convention mm. by the AU, African mm. Union, mm. against Gender sexual... Uh, yeah. So I want to congratulate Ford Foundation for, tho mm. for those uh, efforts. How is it going? I mean, I'm aware that this year, the, the 16 days of activism against sexual and gender-based violence it has gained traction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, much more than uh, mm -hmm. we ever knew has mm -hmm. gained traction. So you are in touch with about how many agencies now that are active? Um, in terms of agencies, maybe governments? Uh, almost, no, but what um, could be government, government and, and, and a private? A lot, actually. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. But a lot. But one of the things we're doing this year is to say... Um, We've been working with women's rights organizations, civil society organizations, NGOs, uh, trying to change the narrative, uh, work with faith and culture leaders. But, but, but we took a turn and said, why don't we work with the faith and culture leaders directly? What is a CSO going to teach you, Father, about religion, norms, and, uh, and gender-based violence? You have uh, um, knowledge about the interpretation of scripture. And when it comes from you to your congregation, they, take it they will take you, take, it, take you better on your word. And if you leave it by example, you know, we, we, would, we would move more and we'll gain better traction than an external person coming to, you know, preach that to you or tell you how to go about that. So that understanding of gender-based violence by faith and culture leaders is critical. Mm -hmm. And so these 16 days, for instance, we're using faith and culture leaders, we're, okay. we're, we're amplifying the voices of critical faith and cultural leaders, whether in the Christian faith, the Islamic faith, uh, and, and our traditional leaders, mm -hmm. who we know these are institutions that date back pre-colonial eras, who are very close to the people, and they are the custodians of culture. Mm -hmm. That if these ones, if these men and women, whom we trust, and are custodians of faith and culture, are the ones saying zero tolerance for gender-based violence, you know, Imagine how far that will oh, go. That so for go the next far. 16 days, and we started it on Saturday uh, with the Sultan of Sokoto making a declaration. We get videos and graphics from 16 uh, uh, faith and culture leaders who are strong voices, you know, who are strong advocates to say it is no longer business as usual. And as, as, uh, as uh, champions and as custodians of faith and culture, we will be the ones using our influence to say no to gender-based violence. We're working with different agencies, including, uh, you, like you mentioned, the UN Women, uh, the, the, the Anglican Communion, the Catholic Church, uh, the Oni of Ife, the Sultan of Sokoto, the Oba of Bini, the Olu of Wari, the Obi of Onisha, and, and many more. And saying that if we have these people who our people respect, you know, we, you know, we have a lot of issues with our politics these days. But if people don't respect politicians, you know, they would at least respect their faith and culture leaders. One, every Nigerian, at the very least, be, belong to either or, or of these faiths. As you engage with all these people, with these various agencies and mm. individuals, what are the common denominators in terms of the root cause mm. of the upsurge in mm. recent times yeah. in our society mm. of sexual and gender-based mm. violence? What are you hearing mm. Mm. as common denominators and in, in, mm. in terms of cause mm. why why the upsurge i mean when i was growing up there would have been yeah. but is it because of the media how come that there appears to be mm. i mean uh, it has become an epidemic i think father one of the things is the eradication of our values the the, the way that uh, the, the entire fabric of our humanity is being shredded into pieces 
the eradication of our values mm -hmm. um, and impunity. Impunity. impunity, no sanctions. No sanctions, people do things. I was talking to the press just after you, yours two, uh, a few minutes ago, and I was saying how uh, when uh, uh, something happens, if a form of violence happens, the way the perpetrator is emboldened, the perpetrator is never ashamed, you know, more often than not, they're not even sober or sorry for what they've done, because it's like, what did I do? I raped a girl. That's, I mean, every man does that, or, you know, in their own opinion, I beat my wife so, you know, um, a, 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 a madame beat her, her, her housekeeper and so what, you know. There's so much impunity. People don't take uh, responsibility for their actions and it's like, what's, what's the worst that could happen? And we're talking about how some of these cases, even when it happens, take so long in court. Some of the victims and survivors mm -hmm. are usually very poor people who don't mm -hmm. have the resources mm -hmm. to go the long haul. If a grantee of mine just broke the news yesterday, a case that started since 2020 during COVID, they just got the sentences today. today. Three years. Who has that time and patience? Yeah. So impunity is one. Uh, a moral decadence is another. Mm -hmm. and, and, and number three is, I think, the, the environment that we're also living in. I think a lot of people are, are working trauma patients. Good. And a, we don't a, a lot of and you, I know you talk uptight. about that yes. a lot. Yes, you know? a lot of people are uptight. A lot of people are distressed. A lot of people are traumatized. And we do say in our trauma healing mm. programs that healed people heal, heal people. others. Conversely, mm. wounded people tend to wound others. We, 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 we won't say it uh, like 100%, yes. but wounded people tend to wound others. Mm. So society, as part of the prevention, Society must work on the mental health hmm. state of people. I agree. Because, I mean, if I shared an experience with you that I heard from a lady, if you have people who are so sick and are going to marry, hmm. then it is not difficult to imagine what is going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. So, perhaps... Marriage preparation ritual must be taken more seriously mm -hmm. by the traditional societies and the religious groups. We really need to take marriage preparation more seriously. And that's why that capacity building you do yes. with uh, uh, the church, the yes. church leaders, because yes. it's in that counseling. Now we just do it as a tick the box thing. No, they it, take premarital it's counseling. It's supposed to be they a, do a crash, thing. a crash course for like a week or Instead two, of three and months. then and then they are married. And these people come into that marriage, you know, with with uh, values from different homes that they come from, without you know breaking down those things. What are the trauma issues that you're going through? You know, what is the minimum standard in this? You know, what are the do's and don'ts? You know, and people keep crossing the line every day because they don't even know any better. And someone that has faced that kind of abuse in their background would definitely, like you said, rather than heal people because you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And you know that, I don't know if you have followed the news, um, the number of Nigerians, Nigerian men in prison mm. in the U.S., on account of wife battery. battery. Oh my God. Because in that society, you face the, you face the music. Mm. You can't, you can't. Which is where impunity the, comes in, yes. Father. How many men go to jail in Nigeria for beating their wives? If a man beats his wife in the neighborhood, the neighbors will even tell the woman to beg the man and go back into the house. In other parts of the world, the neighbors yeah. will probably call so, them. Um, and a number of, especially in this, in the Japa syndrome, syndrome. era, they're not prepared for Many where they're going. Many men are not prepared for where they are going. So there is a serious problem mm. that we need to work on this dimension of the prevention. Mm. Beginning from childhood, beginning from when children are born. True. Uh, somebody mentioned in the hall earlier, non-violent communication. Mm. That from day one, from the time the child is learning to talk, the child needs to be taught non-violent communication. So that by the time this young child becomes 20, 21, mm. 25 and is get, trying to get married, has learned how to say, excuse me, mm. how to say, may I, mm. how to say, thank you, how to say, please. And how to respond in crisis situations when yes. hurts. Yes. yes. Calmly. Calmly. Mm. Uh, and how a number of people need to be trained in society to be counselors. We, mm. need, we need many lay counselors. Many, many people who to get basic training to be able to help others. Because, I mean, when are we going to be able to train the, the, mm. the hundreds of thousands of clinical psychologists we will need? 
but 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 that mm -hmm. a lot of people with basic inputs can help others Agreed. Yeah, as, as counselors mm -hmm. because this thing can be traced back to the family mm. dysfunctional families are producing dysfunctional offspring mm -hmm. and then this offspring now are visiting their traumas on others on others who may be weaker than them mm. uh, so you, you see how the tapestry yeah, is going yeah. so we really need and especially in a country that is going through very very challenging mm. circumstances uh, people react to the challenging circumstances in various ways mm. and one of the um ways people react negatively unfortunately is anger mm, and lashing out on others yeah. anger and then perhaps we should mention this there has been an epidemic of drug abuse Yes, that was. Is it not related? The, I, is I it not related? It. Yeah, it is. It is. If the it husband is. has taken a tramadol mm -hmm. and codeine and mm -hmm. whatever, are you expecting civil behavior mm -hmm. with his wife? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I'll give you an example, Father. Uh, and my driver, when we're coming back, we ha we saw a vehicle at a, a, an accident, like multiple accidents. They hit an Okada man, and I think the man died on the spot because we saw him covered. By the time we're coming back. The Okada men had gathered and started burning vehicles, you know, and and that's Must even with police. Sunnyvale. Yes, Sunnyvale. Even with policemen, road safety, and law enforcement, they were not deterred. There's so much pent up anger, and many of those who carried out that act may not even have an idea of what happened. They have no. They have no idea. As far as they're concerned, a car has hit somebody. They should burn. Uh, the that's all they know jungle justice because people have so much anger they can't control you know when a person can just pick a knife and want to stab another human being just because of some provocation the, uh, with every provo provocation your first response to provocation is to raise your hand or to grab a weapon you know it shows that there's something there's that's an what, imbalance that's what i'm somewhere. saying that's is that drugs saying, or a, 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 yes. a, a mental issue that's what i have been saying that you know i had to observe earlier uh, during the opening ceremony of this workshop i have to observe that look these gory stories we have been mm. told about some horrible things yeah. please remember that these are not normal behaviors it's not it's these not. are very maladaptive behaviors mm. they, uh, uh, something has gone society the fabric of society seems to have collapsed yeah um, if you read um, Chino Achebe's Things Fall Apart, mm. there were sacred weeks in the village mm. where no man can raise his hands to say he's beating his wife. It is, it is an abomination. Mm. Um, do we have periods where it is an abomination to mm. talk, to mm. talk um, rudely to your wife, to talk rudely to your it's as if no more taboos no in more. our society. No no. No. In, a, in the traditional society, they had their own issues, but they had certain structures. Yeah. I remember that where I come from, when a woman gives birth to a baby, for the first, I don't know whether it's 14 days or 21 days, mm. the woman does nothing. The man mm. ensures that whether he's going to bring relations or he does it himself, a man ensures that the woman is mm. fully taken. Society provided. There are even women who gave birth within three days and they are in the hospital for being beaten. We, ha we have uh, some of See? our grantees sharing some when, when in the traditional society, the woman for one month or more mm. is not allowed to go to the kitchen to cook. Yeah. Yeah. He is taken care of. The man will have to make whatever arrangements because this person is in a vulnerable state, state. has just delivered yeah. and so mm. on. Today we have thrown away all that mm. um so we need to rediscover some of the very wonderful good elements in our culture mm -hmm. um I, I was i was i was just going through a documentary that 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 opened my eyes to certain things that actually a lot of the a lot of the anomalies in the society especially with respect mm. to men and women inequality of men and women uh inequity and whatever came with the industrial revolution Mm. that before then, work was home-based. So the man in the garden out there was farming. Mm. Mm. He brought the raw materials. The woman processed. Whether it is cutting, the woman processed to cloth, or it is uh, uh, yam, the woman processed to food, yeah. or it is whatever. 
and that everyone had his job mm. and it was around cottage. The, it was the, a cottage yeah. that's what is called cottage industry yes it was around the cottage and there was mutual uh, there was mutual respect, respect understanding so a lot and of what, shared labor shared labor what happened is that industrial revolution came and the women the women's job was taken and put in a factory mm. right and the man is in the office yes <laughs> so the, we lost the equity that was there. Yeah. We lost the sense of dignity of the woman. The woman who was weaving a cloth in the loom here, the child is running mm -hmm. around. So she has one eye watching the child. She's doing this. The man is in the farm and so on. And there was a measure of understanding that the woman is contributing a lot to the house. And they, well, But when, the, when work now became factory, External. Fa far away from home, mm. in fact, some of these experts are beginning to, to advocate that since COVID has taught us to work from home, are beginning to advocate that some professions can begin yeah. to get back to working from home mm. and, and, and have just there, the wife is doing something, the man is doing something, the children, they have an eye on the children, and there's a bit of mutual mm. respect. Yeah, yeah. I think that COVID uh, um, taught us a lot, yeah. um, and, and unfortunately, even though <laughs> there were there was also an outbreak violence. of violence, because people were looking at themselves too, like, too, for too long. Well, on the one hand, uh, but it was called the shadow pandemic at that time because perpetrators and their victims were now locked in the same. That's what I'm saying. They are looking at themselves because too, work too. was an escape route yes. for most survivors or victims of gender-based mm -hmm. violence. It was not, for instance, a lot of uh, housekeepers, uh, young women or girls who worked in homes where maybe the spouses of their madams were abusing them. And maybe when the madam goes to the market Walk. or something or is out, it was, there were cases like that coming up. But I think that's a teething problem that sort of has died down a little bit because the spike during COVID, was, uh, it, it was enormous. It was something else at that time. But I agree with you that there has to be a rethinking of the structure of, of the society. structure of society there has to be that rethinking what we currently have isn't working is destroying us and i'm afraid that we may not be able to sustain it for long if we don't do a reset yes. you know to it and and, and and finally with the example you gave about what happened on the road mm. when you have the majority of okada drivers in this in this city mm. many of them grew up on the streets on the as street. it were yeah yeah so they never had wholesome upbringing. Mm. And in a, society, in a lawless society where you can go, okay, somebody hit a motorcycle, mm. he's given no chance to be arrested and to be interrogated, he's killed there. Yeah. And the justice. vehicles are all burnt. And those people will burn those vehicles and go away scot-free. That's why I said impunity. Impunity. Mm. Uh, uh, that kind of society, something is seriously yeah. wrong. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Something is seriously wrong. Um, I, I'm told that the, one of the people who hit somebody ran to the nearby estate, jumped their fence and ran into the nearby estate. Those guys actually went and started checking each house. Yes, oh my goodness. that's last night. They went to check each house. I saw it. I passed it. It must be my estate. The Hebra. And that's why the man ran away, because they won't even give him an opportunity to so explain no. what happened. Meanwhile, when we passed... He may not be the one that is When guilty. we passed, we found road safety there because it was, we were at a standstill so we could hear the conversation. The road safety said the Okada man crossed the road indiscriminately. This man stopped. So as he stopped, multiple cars hit him from behind. So it was not, not even his fault. The Okada man crossed the road indiscriminately and this man applied his brake and, and three or four cars... And... But that's... That's thing that makes a human being just want to lynch somebody to death. Now imagine that person is a father, is a husband, is a brother, is a bread boyfriend, winner. is bread a bread. Gone. He is going to hit anybody or almost kill anybody that upsets him. Anybody that can do that to another. And I hope that they weren't able to gain access into that estate, you know, to... Because they overpowered even the police and, and everybody that was still able to burn it's the unfortunate. Vehicles. Back to our mm. uh, elimination of sexual and gender-based uh, uh, violence. And like I said, mm. um, the traction this, the, 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 the this, this year mm. has been very yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, I am hoping that mm. um, the, with, the, with the support of the media, mm -hmm. uh, 
and, and, and the various civil society mm -hmm. uh, organizations that are active, that mm -hmm. more people's eyes will be open yeah. to the yeah. problem in our hands yeah. and what each one of us mm -hmm. uh, ca can do. So, la your last words to Nigerians on this. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for having me. I want to say that this is an opportunity we may never get again because we have an epidemic on our hands. Uh, the uh, gender-based violence is, is the shadow pandemic, whether we like it or not. And we did, we've done it before. We've dealt with epidemics of this nature. When HIV AIDS was a scourge and was ravaging the whole world, you know, we engaged faith and culture, culture leaders. We engaged the private sector and they were the voices that the masses could listen to and identify with. They, the masses and people at the local level and community level will do, do not have access to the politicians, the policy makers, the director generals or ministers, but they have access to people like you, Father. They have access to the imam in the village. You know, they have access to the traditional leader. And when you are the one leading these efforts and this campaign, we will be able we to, to reverse go, 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 the strength. We did it also with the immunization program. Yes. When the Sultan yes. of Sokoto began to talk about immunization, there was nothing wrong with it. It's not a family planning tool. We gained access and we were able to roll back polio. So we need non-state actors like you who are closer to the people, who speak to the people, who the people respect. And you sit in that realm of influence where, you know, they know that you are your servants of God and that you are custodians of faith and culture. We need that, uh, that engagement and we need you as advocates and champions uh, to make progress. Thank you Precisely, very much. that is what uh, Luke Stera is doing, bringing mm -hmm. religious leaders and, and community leaders together to train mm -hmm. so that they have all the mechanisms, they, whether it is the legal frameworks mm -hmm. or the communication skills and, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. to do this work. On this note, I, I thank you for coming thank you, and uh, congratulate you and your colleagues thank for you. the wonderful work that you are doing. Thank May you, the good Father. Lord help us to do what we must Amen. to bring an end to this menace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father.